Hey everybody, you know my dealio. I'm testing the audio. Um, I am not sure if it's working or not. Uh, I'm not, my camera was acting funny and I don't know if the audio is going to also act funny. I updated my computer like a goofball. So let me know how I sound. Uh, and yeah, I'll be on in just a sec. I got to kick out a kitty cat. Jimbo, do you want to say hi bye real quick before, before I kick you out? Come here. Yeah, come here. Yeah, huh? Say hi and bye. Can you guys hear? Say hi. Oh, you don't want to now? Oh, okay. Here, wait, real quick. Hi. <laughs> hi, bye. You can say hi again at the end of the live stream. Okay, be on a tech bye.
it's gone forever. Oh, yeah. No. Whatever. Let's rock and roll. Oh. I've been... <laughs> My voice has been on the whole time. Okay, everybody. Let's switch around. I did it. Hey, everybody. How are you? Hope you're having a great day. Um, I'm having a pretty good one. I'm, I'm just kind of like chilling. How's everybody else doing? Hi, chat. Hi, everybody. I see yous. Hopefully the chat will pop up on screen. Also, I don't know what's going on with my face cam. I look really like... I don't know. It looks like there's a, a cloud in between me and the camera. But I did the best that I could, given what happened with my updating my phone or updating my computer. Hey, Becky. Hey, Baba Green Sheep. Baba Green Sheep. I like it. Hi, everybody. How are you today? Hope you're doing great. New live stream. New Thursday. And I got a fun one. It's, it might be a little bit of a long live stream. We're going to find out. But let's just actually switch straight to the hands and talk about what we're doing today. Let me know how the audio sounds, by the way. I'm wondering if the background music is too loud or too quiet. I haven't a clue. Today, we're going to be crocheting some dwarves. That's right. They're finally out. It's true. We're going to be making some dwarves. You might recognize one. I mean, you can barely see it, but there's one in the corner right up there. Right there on the tip cam because of someone's tip last time. Love the thumbnail. Oh, I'm so glad you love the thumbnail. That means a lot to me because I do spend a lot of time on these thumbnails. But anyhow, let's go through everything, get crocheting, and then I can hang out with the chat a lot more in depth. Patricia, hello. You don't speak English, but hello. Okay. So today we're going to be making some dwarves. Actually, we're just going to make one dwarf because it does take a while to make a dwarf. But we're going to be adding to our dwarf a little weapon, be it an axe or a shield, maybe a helmet, maybe all three. We're going to see. Um, I do have this little cute dagger that my dad made me out of a nail. I thought that might be cute to add to a dwarf. But also I kind of think this might be cuter to add to uh, a nether pattern that we're going to be doing next week but we'll talk about that way later on if you want to crochet along with me you totally can um all you need are the materials that you see on screen now look at this i made a little tiny I, it's so cute right um i actually had it already made and so i was like oh my god this is gonna be perfect for the live stream uh because i i always like to have the materials made when i do the um the video tutorial so that i can like show show the materials in the video tutorial and I actually didn't use them, but that doesn't matter. If you want to crochet along with me, you'll need the following things. The first thing you're going to need is the pattern, which you can find right here, clubcrochet.com slash dwarf right there. I think I put it in the description as well. I might have actually, have I put it in the description? I did. And let's put it as a, as a pinned comment too. So, um, get the pattern here dwarf boom and we're gonna pin this comment so you can't lose it um the <laughs> cooper i love the little axe emoji too the pattern is free for today only or until i forget to turn it off probably till the end of the weekend realistically because i am going to a wedding tomorrow for my cousin so yeah there might i might forget Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> but if you want to crochet along with me, other than the pattern, uh, it does have a video tutorial. I highly suggest you check it out because I spent a lot of time on it and I think it looks really good. Uh, and I really like the thumbnails and pictures and video and background and blah, blah, blah. Um, also, you can see the new way that the patterns are designed on the website, which is way cool. I wanted to set it up so you could see it on screen right now, but I didn't do that because I didn't do that. So, oh well. Besides the pattern, you're gonna need the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton for everything except for the hair, which is gonna be 100% wool. 
Um, the colors you're going to need for the cotton yarns are going to be your skin tone. We're going to be using a beige for a skin tone. You'll need some brown. That's going to be used for the clothing. You'll need a little bit of black. That's just going to be used for the feet. Some gray, which is going to be used for our dwarves armor because they have built in armor. You'll need a very small amount of red. That's going to be for the nose of our dwarf. A little bit of gold, which is going to be used for rings and holding down hair. And then, of course, some other yarn of some kind. I suggest using something that's a little bit furrier or fuzzier than cotton, uh, and that's going to be used for the hair. I've got this orange yarn for the hair, but honestly, I think when we come to the hair, I'm going to see what your guys' opinion is and what color uh, we should make the hair. Um, that's all the yarn that you're going to need. I'm going to be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook today because that's the right size hook for the yarn at hand. Um, you'll also need a pipe cleaner. Now you don't really need a pipe cleaner, but it's really nice for the um, to put inside the arms so that you can make the arms like poseable and stuff, which is kind of fun. Uh, you'll need a darning needle. I like using a crimped end. It helps sew into hard to reach stitches. You'll need some safety eyes. We're going to be using six millimeter safety eyes in this video. If you want to get a bottle of eyes like this, I do still have a few more left available and I ordered some more of these bottles. So if you want to get a bottle of eyes, they are available in the shop and is a great way to support this channel. But we'll talk about more ways to support this channel in just a sec. Um, besides all those materials, I'm going to be using a button and that's going to be used either for a shield or a hat or something. I really like these giant buttons. I actually got these ones from uh, Joanne Fabrics and I really like them because they got this like really slick ceramic on the inside and then like this, I think they're made out of um, coconuts or something. I don't know. They're really cool and they look really rustic, which is exactly what I imagine one of these dwarves would have. Um, I'll talk more about lore of what dwarves are in my stitched world in a little bit as well when we get into the pattern. Um, and I really like this one. I'm also going to be using some other uh, buttons for uh, weapons and stuff, but we're going to learn all about that a little later as well. You'll need a pair of scissors and some stuffing. And I do believe, I do believe that is everything that you're going to need. Now, before we get hooking, Let's talk about how you can support this channel because there's a bunch of different ways you could support this channel. The first free way is like this video down below, subscribe to the channel. If you're not already liked and subscribed, what are you doing even? Like and subscribe down below. It's a great way to support this channel and uh, it's totally free, so you should totally do it. If this video, let's go with this. Let's start that giveaway process going here again. If this video gets 200 likes, that's not even that much. Just 200 likes. I'm going to give away, we're going to give away a dragon crochet kit next live stream if this video gets 200 likes. That's totally a reasonable number to hit, I think, and it's a pretty cool kit. So yeah, let's give that a shot. 200 likes equals dragon next live stream, um, which will be next Thursday, by the way. So subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Other ways you can support this channel. If you really, really like what's going on here and you want to support monetarily, the best way to support monetarily is with a Club Crochet membership. Members get early access to future patterns. They get access to the exclusive library of tutorials. I have like, I think I'm about at 300 patterns so far. So it's quite a lot of patterns. And I add new ones every single month, really every few weeks. Um, See, Onyx? Yep, you want to crochet that dragon pattern. Like this video. Um, that's a great way to support this channel. Membership started only $5 a month, uh, and you can even get a free trial to see if it's something you're interested in. I highly suggest it. Like, not only is it a great way to support this channel, but you actually do get a lot of content for that. Um, the new patterns that came out this month, or are about to come out, are the dwarf, which I just showed you. Looks like this guy right here, and we're gonna be making one today. Um, uh, available for free today. And a cobalt, which are super cute, and I'm really, really proud of. 
I just finished the pattern and it's getting uploaded to the website. I think today it might be up by this weekend. I'm really, really pushing for Saturday at the latest for this pattern to come out. Uh, but check it out. They're like basically mini dragon men. I love them. Um, I'm a big fan of Dungeons and Dragons and these are themed off of them. They're kind of like little mischievous sprites. Um, I interpret them as like little little dragon men or little lizard men, um, but they're interpreted a lot of different ways in uh, folklore, specifically in dramatic for folklore. And we're actually going to be crocheting one of these live next Thursday. So this is what is next Thursday's live stream. We'll probably make more than one realistically. Um, but yeah, this is one of the other new patterns this month. Um, and I'm working on a little baby dragon. Okay. I think that was a lot. Oh yeah, wait, I'm so sorry. There's one more thing. If you want to help support monetarily other than purchasing merch and kits and stuff like that, you can support by tipping. It's a great way to support this channel and also just super duper cool, a super cool thing to do. And before we even get to today's tips, uh, Cooper, thank you so much for your tip, but I'm going to talk about that one in just a second. Uh, Oh, and you even made a great request. I really appreciate the request as well, Cooper. But I have to get to last week's because a curious snail donated 25 bucks last week. And I it was at the very end. I totally missed it. So I've got something special for them because they have the first addition to our background right here. Let's just switch cameras real quick. So these are, this is the tip cam here. Anything that you tip uh, will get added somewhere on this as long as it's 10 or more buckaroons. And a curious snail did our first tip for our scene here. By the end of the year, hopefully we're gonna have this filled up with a beautiful scene of different characters doing different stuff. I added a little bit of grass here uh, just to start it. I wanna add grass all along this. I wanna do a backdrop and characters and everything like that. But we're gonna start with characters because a curious snail already donated and I have a really cool one for them. Uh, I really, really like this guy a lot and I just wanna look at him all the time and I feel like this is a very great addition to our first one here. I do not have a pattern for it, so I apologize ahead of time, but this guy right here, um, his name is, oh, there we go. His name is, um, Ron with two N's. He talks kind of like this. Hi, my name is Ron. I gave him a cool little axe there. He's got this cool little hair thing. Um, but a curious snail, if you're around and you would like to uh, rename this guy, you totally can. He's gonna be our first addition to our backdrop here, but look at this cool little like armored shoulder pad that I made for him. I actually used like, well, I'll, I used like this copper thing to make it shiny. I was trying to make it look like a metal button and I think it looks really cool. Um, but yeah, it's way cool. And we're gonna add him right here as our first addition to our backdrop. Get my head out of the way. I'm gonna keep him on the grass for right now. Actually, you know what? We're gonna put him here, but he will go on the grass later on. But just so that he's very noticeable right there. I think that's great. And the Curious Snail, again, if you have any suggestions for a name, uh, maybe we can give him a middle name. I don't know. I really like the name Ron with two ends, but you can do whatever you want. Uh, and then the last, uh, the next donation uh, before we get crocheting, hi, not, K-N-O-T-E. Hi, I see you in the chat. Uh, I'm just getting through the beginning and then we're gonna get crocheting. Uh, we have a donation from Cooper who, who had a very specific request. They donated for 10 bucks and want to add a panda to the tree. Now, there is not a tree yet over here, but this works, this I think is perfect for right now. Um, I have my dad trying to make a metal tree so that all these can be like mechanically, or like metally, you know, whatever. Uh, but we're gonna add your little panda right here. Uh, I do think our panda has a name, but I can't remember what the name is. Um, but I think we named it when we crocheted it live. But let me know if you have uh, a name for it or if you can remember the name. Uh, let me know. And thank you so much for your support, Cooper. I super appreciate you. Okay. The first one, Johnny, was this guy. Here, you know what? Let me just switch back to hand so you can see it a little bit better. This was uh, the first donation for a curious snail from last week, and I just think he's so cute. I'm really, really big fan of it. I don't have a pattern for this guy yet, but he's basically supposed to be a dragonborn, which are like dragon men. 
uh, and I'm just super proud of him. I just think he looks so cute, and I have to work on a pattern for him really, really bad. But God, he's so cute. He's so cool looking. I love him. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna put him back here for Curious Snail for right now. Oh, okay. I think that is. <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, Sunshine's working on a mushroom gnome. That is too cute. I love that. Let's get crochet in because we actually do have a quite a big crochet pattern today. Um, so I'm going to pull up the pattern really quick. Um, I'm just going to pull it up on my phone so I can, but it's really easy to get to clubcrochet.com slash dwarf. This is what the pattern looks like uh, on your phone at least. You know, you got the video tutorial all the things, all the pictures, blah, blah, blah. And then the tutorial is right down here. And we're gonna start with the arms. Check out how cool these check marks look. I'm so proud of them and they work so well. Quick shout out to um, Jimmy who helped me make all this. Uh, and we're, we're still making improvements to this to add things like uh, a, uh, the video will scroll with you. And then when you click these icons, it'll skip you to certain parts of the video. It's super cool. I highly suggest you check it out. And obviously it's totally free now, so you totally should. But we're gonna start by making the arms. And now we can hang out with the chat too, which is always, always a blast. A blast. I do, I need to start making gnomes for sure. I gotta get on that gnome train like sunshine. So we're gonna put all of our weapons and stuff aside and get our setup here. Um, we won't need the pipe cleaner till later. And all we need right now is our beige yarn. And look at how clean our setup is. I hope we can keep it this clean the whole time. We'll find out though. Okay, so we're gonna start with our beige yarn because we're gonna be making the arms. Um, and yeah. Oh my gosh, Johnny, I love that. Johnny said that they're designing their first crocheted backpack and they're almost done with a sleeping fox. That's too cute. A full-size backpack or a miniature backpack? Are you making a backpack for your sleeping fox? Because that also sounds really cute. Uh, that actually makes me think, I want to crochet a little backpack for our dwarf. Maybe we'll make our dwarf like an adventuring dwarf. Um, or a mining dwarf. I don't know. Let me know. You got any ideas? Got any ideas of what we should add to our dwarf here? What, what, kind, of, what kind of vibe are we feeling for a dwarf? I wonder. Or five. I mean, we could always go with the mining aspect. Six, seven, and eight. You know, we can make a mining dwarf. We can make an exploring exploring dwarf. We got. We can do a little backpack. I've got a bunch of little things that we could add to a backpack. We can make an axe, but obviously, first we need to make the dwarf itself. So, we got to start somewhere. By the way, dwarves are i made i designed this for my tabletop game stitched which is a tabletop game that you make uh from crafts wait no I, how do i say it it's a tabletop game that you make from home it's war that you craft it's stitched uh i'm a super big fan of it it's like a tabletop game that i designed where you crochet your pieces uh and this is actually designed to be one of the characters in stitched uh, I have tested this character out quite a lot, so I feel pretty confident in the rule set for the character, but let me go through it really quick for all you stitched lovers back out there. I don't know how many there are, uh, probably not as many <laughs> as I'd like, just because it's my favorite thing in the world. But basically, in Stitched, uh, there is the ability to mine uh, or, or basically like loot, I think is a better way to explain it, where you can get gold and you can use that gold to purchase characters and stuff like that. And in the game, dwarves are especially good at mining. And that's because, I mean, other than the fact that that is just a known thing for dwarves uh, in fantasy lore, is that dwarves are good at mining. Uh, but also in my world, in stitched lore, I like to think of dwarves as uh, residing in uh in mountains um specifically in i call them the <laughs> you guys are gonna see the full nerd of louis come out right now i mean if you didn't already if you haven't already seen it uh i like to think of the dwarves residing in the but 
Buttonian Mountains. Not like butt, but like buttons. And, <laughs> and so they mine for buttons, which are probably not as easy to come by in the stitched world as things like yarn and fabric and stuff like that. So I just really like the idea that they just have an excess, um, they have access to an excess, wow, look at that word. They have access to an excess amount of buttons, so they clad themselves in buttons and maybe they use them as currency and maybe they they give them to, uh, they trade them with, with uh, neighboring goblin tribes and stuff like that. And in the game Stitched, uh, the special ability that dwarves have, because every character in Stitched has special abilities, and dwarves are, um, they have the ability to, um, they're called prospectors. So they're extra good at mining. And if you want to, uh, if you, if you try to mine with a, is it like super loud? It feels like really loud to me. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. On my end, at least. Yeah, that's pretty good. And in the, um... If you were to uh, mine with a dwarf, you'd get like a an extra opportunity to mine for extra gold and stuff like that. It's super cool. I'm just really big, big fan of the game. Yeah, right? I like that idea too, Emily. I like the idea of buttons being a rare material in the stitched world. Clayton, I love that. Clayton said, Ladies, gentlemen, and eldritch, mo and assorted eldritch monsters, please don't forget to leave a like on the, <laughs> on the stream. I agree with that wholeheartedly. One, two, I'm gonna go three. And yeah, we're working on an arm now. You can kind of see how it's coming together. Here's his little thumb. The dwarves actually have like pretty muscular arms. So I designed the patterns to be uh, the pattern for the arm to have like basically a bicep, which I thought was kind of fun. Can he be a blacksmith and we can make an anvil? Maybe. Hmm. Ooh, I don't hate that idea. How would I make an anvil though? Oh man, he wouldn't be a blacksmith, he'd be a buttonsmith. I actually always had this idea for a character, or for a blacksmith. Like I've always wanted to do um, little like miniature dioramas instead of um, just making my characters, but actually making like a scene for them. And one of my ideas was for a buttonsmith. And the idea would be that uh, they're it's, it'd be like their little worker like station and they'd have a big light bulb that's connected to a battery and on the light bulb would be a button so that the idea would be that like they'd use the light bulb to heat up buttons that would melt down to be the right shape so that they could use them as like shoulder pads and stuff like that. So they were like actually morphing the plastic in a button to be used for different things because they're button smiths. That's at least what I always thought. I know, you guys are getting full nerd Lou right now. I actually emailed a um, another YouTube creator today who uh, I'm a fan of called Esper the Bard who does like all these videos about Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. And I told him I'm... I, I asked him if he wanted to do like a giveaway collaboration thing. Uh, and I felt like so nerdy like, Hey, I'm a big fan of your channel. <laughs> And, and it's, I don't know, it's just funny. Takiyaki, thank you for the birthday. Uh, happy birthday, I appreciate that. It was last week, but I super duper appreciate it. Thank you. Ooh, good question. Angel Cinder Dreamer asks, how long does it take to make a small crochet of plush with a simple one, like a dinosaur? Uh, the Triceratops, I think, is probably the most simple of the dinosaur patterns. And I think, for the first time, I think it would take you about an hour to crochet. Uh, but every time after that, it would take 
significantly less time. I think I can make one in about 15 minutes, maybe half an hour. Uh, so they can be made really, really fast. The, the bonimals, like the frogs and stuff, can be made extremely quickly. Like, I can definitely make a frog in 15 minutes. Ooh, Becky thinks I should make a queen burb. A queen to go along with our king? That's a definite possibility. Oh my god, can you imagine a queen burb being even larger than the king? Do you remember the king burb? Let me show you. Here's what the king burb looked like. Ah, I lost, he lost his head. I have him above my desk all times, watching over me. But here's the king burb. And here's what he looks like without his fake head. Oh my god, he's so epic. <laughs> he's, he's called, um, I think he's called, his name is Borb the Orb or something? King Borb the Orb? I think it's something like that. Jules would remember because she's actually the one that came up with the name, I think. Or actually, no. I think someone in the comments made it, came up with the name. Two. How about a raptor one? A raptor, I think, is in a similar uh, vein as the, as the triceratops because they are made without any sewing. So the first time you make a raptor, it's going to be tough because there's a lot of like really weird stitches especially when it comes to the um, the mouth and the tail and the feet. It's just a really, it's a significantly difficult pattern the first time you make it. Uh, so it might take an hour or so to make it the first time, but then after that it's gonna take a lot less time because they are very small. So I would say maybe half an hour to, to make a raptor once you know what you're doing. Ooh, I like the idea of the queen burb just being a a drab of boring colors. I like that. Yeah, definitely, definitely boring colors. <laughs> Clayton says, King Borb sees our crimes and loves us regardless. Glory to King Borb. <laughs> this is why I love the chat. <laughs> you guys, me and you have a very similar vibe. Very similar vibe of just being weird. Just a bunch of weird nerds. Oh, I forgot to check off. We made an arm, so I can check it off on my on the pattern. Two, three. So we actually already almost got both the arms done, which is nice because we did take a while to get started. Took like half an hour, geez Louise. You know, the first half an hour of these live streams are too dang long. We need to, I need to like figure out how to expedite that process of, of explaining how these live streams work for any newbies that come in. Angel, uh, hmm, that's a that's an interesting question. So someone said that they wanted to charge you fifty dollars to make a raptor, uh, and I don't know if this is overpricing. It you know it's really really hard to gauge that kind of stuff because it if it does take two hours, let's say it takes them two hours to make a raptor, which isn't unrealistic, especially if it's not my pattern and it's like a larger pattern. At $50, I mean, if you include the materials and two hours of time, you're still only making like $25 an hour. And even then, you also gotta pay, like there's the shipping cost, there's this listing stuff. I kind of feel like custom work for $50 is pretty reasonable, um, just because they do take a long time. And I don't know, it's, it's hard to gauge that kind of thing. I sneezed. I sneezed. Oh my gosh, Becky is so close to finishing up an outfit that they're crocheting. That is awesome, congratulations. Um. Okay, we're almost done with the arms now.
Yeah, I don't think I've ever crocheted something as big as an outfit, Becky. So, props to you. That that is hard. It's a hard uh, thing to do. Oh, interesting, Hannah. Okay, so Aunt Hannah said that maybe you can make a make and play an edited video summary at the beginning of the live. I know some streamers have raid videos, which would be similar. Interesting. Wonder. I don't know what a raid video means, but that totally sounds like what I'm looking for. Uh, can you give me an example of a streamer that uses a raid video or, or an example of what a raid video is? Because I don't even know what that really means. Ooh, Linda. Good question. Linda asks, my bobble stitches always turn out inside out. Are there any suggestions when you do your next one? I will give you. I will give you some suggestions. Uh, and I know how that feels. And I know, and I, I think I've got an idea of what's of what's going on there. So I probably can help. Um, the next time I'll do a bobble stitch is going to be in the face for the... Uh, for the nose, which is going to be in uh, probably not that long, but I'll make sure to uh, give you some extra tips when I get there. Before I get there, though, we need to make some shoulder pads, which are super duper easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and chain four with some gray yarn to make some shoulder pads. We're going to make two of these. But we already got the arms. Look at that arms done. Some shoulder pads started. <laughs> One, two, three, four. How's everybody's week been? What have you guys been up to? We had a party. I had, that's a big... That's probably the biggest thing for me. I had a party this weekend for my birthday, um, and it was wild. I don't think I've thrown a party in like over a decade, and it went really well. I was scared, but it went really well. Ah, oh, it's like an intro. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yes, Angel Cinder Dreamer asks, I saw you have an owl you made out of crochet. Do you have a pattern that I can find to make one? Absolutely, I do. Um, uh, actually, if you're looking for any of my crochet patterns, you can probably find them by just uh, going to the website, clubcrochet.com, and then uh, there's a little search bar, and you can use that to find any patterns that you want. Or you can go to clubcrochet.com slash browse, and that's where you can find all my patterns. But we definitely have an owl pattern. It looks like this. Looks kind of like this, but I mean, this one's pink, but yeah. Um, I actually think I might even have some owl crochet kits available. Uh, and it's also a burb. Uh, I teach how to make it so it's not a burb, but it is a burb. I think the pattern is just at clubcrochet.com slash owl, actually, too. Uh, but yes, we, we. I mean, I have so many patterns. We definitely have an owl i would say there's like a there's a significant opportunity or chance that i have a pattern for whatever you have an idea for okay what would a baby dragon pattern i'm curious because they're so cute I'll show you. I'll show you. The baby dragon pattern will be coming out. Um, I really, really wanted it to be on the website uh, for this live stream for like the rough draft version of the pattern, but I didn't finish that in time. But I do have a baby dragon pattern that is being worked on right now, and I can show you an example of it. They're basically bonimals. So here are a few examples of baby little baby dragons that I've made. Uh, this one I made little fun little eyes for it, but this is more of a natural baby dragon. You can see their little baby wing there. I love this wing pattern. It's so easy, it's so cool. But yeah, this was my example of a baby dragon. 
I also made like baby demons using a basically the same pattern, uh, but making the the mouth open like that. And then here's another baby dragon. Here's another one. I really like the baby dragons. I'm I'm pretty addicted to making these. Not gonna lie. Don't they look like little biters? They look like they're. I feel like I would like. Oh, how cute! And then it'd be like, be like, ow! Doesn't it look like that? No. Anyhow, they're so cute. I love them. Uh, they should. These will be coming out uh, in uh, February, but the rough draft version of these patterns will be out pretty soon. I, I think within like uh, a week or so. Probably. I I really hope by next live stream I'll have it up on the website. Also check it out. They stack on top of each other, which is kind of fun. They have magnets in their butts and their heads. That way they can stick to whatever if they want to. Okay, let's keep going though. Um, I'm currently working on the head of our dwarf and we are going to... Oh, can I show you a baby next to a, an adult dragon? Yeah, sure. I don't, I don't even think that the big version of my dragons, I don't think they're adults. I, I like to think that they're teenagers. So let me show you, let me show you. Let me finish this round and check it off on our pattern so I don't lose track of where I'm at. We're almost to the bobble stitch, by the way, um, uh, Linda. So just giving you that heads up. Um, so here is a baby and here, is a golden or no here's a here's a teenager i would say this is like a teenager dragon uh this is the dragon pattern on the website eventually i want to make a gigantic dragon like huge um but i have them all folded up right now so that he's like looks like he's sleeping just because i think it's cute um there's actually is there one in the background no there's not oh here here's what it looks like all opened up so here's the Here's a golden one I made, so you can kind of see. I'm working right now on a bundle, on a pattern bundle for us, uh, so that it'll include, it'll include the baby dragons, the big dragon, a kobold, a dwarf, and a, um, a treasure chest available. Uh, it should be available soon. I just haven't had the chance to uh, put enough work into it just yet. Um, okay, so now I'm on round three. I think I need to get to round five is when I will be doing that bobble stitch for you. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. You can interrupt. I don't mind. Oh, happy birthday to Clayton's mom. Thank you. Yes, Clayton, listen to Clayton. Give this video a like, and I hope you have a great day, Clayton. Tell your mom we all say happy birthday. Ooh, I could use some beer battered, beer battered cod. That sounds great. Actually, after this live stream, I think Jules and I are going to go get sushi. It's our anniversary today. Oh my gosh, it's our anniversary. That's... I think it's our seven or eight year anniversary. I think it's seven year. Wild. Seven year anniversary. Wow. That's a while. And we haven't had sushi in a bit, so I'm very excited. Ooh, an Eastern dragon. Oh, 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 like a, yes, yeah, like a Chinese dragon. Uh, yeah, I think that would be a really cool pattern. Like the snake dragons, kind of. Yeah, like the dragons from uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender. I love that kind of dragon. Yeah, I, I've actually thought a lot about of doing one like that. What's a good gift for a guy on a first anniversary? 
What's a good gift for a guy on a first anniversary? I would say food. Food is always great. Maybe like, I mean, what I would love is like a video game and then like a time to play that video game together. Like a game that we could both play together, I think would be really cute. At least from, for me and Jules, we would both really like that, I think. So something like that. Um, I think just time spent together is always great. Okay, skip the first chain and then we single crochet one. And then we half double crochet one. So I'm making the ears right now, by the way, if you're following along in the written pattern, which is at clubcrochet.com dwarf. And I'm about to make the notes for you. Uh, I think it was Linda that was asking. And let me show you how to do bobble stitches so that they are on the outside, not on the inside. So I'm making my nose in red. Hopefully I have enough yarn here. I think I will. I'm gonna put it down there and I'm just gonna crochet around this color. And this is good too, because you'll be able to see how the stitch works a little bit better also. Let me zoom in for you. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a bobble stitch and then I'll show you how to keep it on the outside. Because the real trick here is gonna be uh, fixing it after you're done crocheting the bobble to make sure that it's on the outside of the stitches. Uh, I think the first thing to note is that there is a big difference between the outside of the stitches and the inside of the stitches. The outside of the stitches have these V's. I'm currently looking at the outside of our stitches. You can see how they have all these V's on the outside. And this is for crocheting in the round if I'm not turning around. If I'm turning around after each round, it's kind of hard to tell what the outside and the inside of the stitches look like because it switches every round. But because I'm going in a spiral, it's always going to be the outside, you know, pointing out. The inside of the stitches look like this. So if I had it inside out, it would look like this. You can see these little like bars in between round. The, that is what signifies that you're on the outside of this, or you're looking at the inside of stitches. So you definitely want the outside pointing out. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make the bobble. I think we're making a mini bobble here, which means you do this repeat three times where I yarn over, I go into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two. And then I repeat that process three times. As I repeat this process though, I'm keeping it relatively tight. I, I want this stitch to be kind of tight. The looser you make the nose, the looser the stitch actually looks. And it could be like, I don't know, sometimes it could look a little weird if you do that. So try to keep a tight grip on your stitch as you're going on your bobble stitch. There's my second repeat and see how I'm loading up basically loops on my stitch. And here's my third repeat and I could keep going here. That's a mini bobble. That's enough for a mini bobble. If I wanted to do a regular size bobble, I do one more repeat, a bulky bobble. I do two more repeats. You get the gist. And then to finish up, I'm just going to change colors and then pull through with that new color. Now what your problem is, is that it's, doing this, right, is going basically like inside out, kind of. So it looks indented in the face. I think that's what your issue is. Uh, and look, I'll crochet the next stitch actually while it's in inverted and you can kind of see how that'll look. Um, I'll even cut the yarn and we'll look at it. Like that would look awfully weird on our dwarf, I think. Really easy fix. All you have to do is from the inside, just pop it out. Like really just poke it out like this, like that. And I like to sometimes like even pinch it so that it stays on the outside. Uh, and then the real trick is gonna be in the next round, making sure that it stays popped out. I hope that helps. Um, let me know if you have any other questions when it comes to that, Linda. Uh, and I'd be more than happy to help. But now we have a little nose for our dwarf. All right, let's keep going. Boom. Okay. Two, three. Looks like we got five stitches between the first and the second ear, which is interesting. Nice. 
points. Okay. Two, three. We actually do, we have a duck as well. Becky, let's see, where's our duck? Oh, there he is. So the duck that I have as an example, which I'll show you after I finish this round, is named Monsieur Quack. He's from a live stream where we crocheted a duck and uh, the live stream gave me, uh, y'all gave me suggestions on what to make the duck and we all decided to give it a beret and a, uh, a baguette and make it a French duck. And so I'll show you our Monsieur Quack. We've made a lot of different birds. I think we have like 11 different kinds now. But here is Monsieur Quack. He looks very questioning like, oh, a quack quack. Est-ce que tu quack? Je peux quack. And then if you take his head off, his little burb underneath also has a little, uh, a little, um, how do you say, uh, hat. I think I hear my mom. Maybe not. My mom's coming over to grab a bunch of uh, a bunch of eucalyptus right now. What? Yeah. Um, because uh, my it's my cousin's wedding this weekend, and my mom is doing the flowers, and she needed eucalyptus, and it was so expensive to just buy like branches of eucalyptus at the store and I was like mom we have got so much eucalyptus in the backyard it's crazy come over here and, and just take it all do I not different colors when I change colors no Veronique uh, Veronique uh, I do not I do not not I do not not the colors together it's hard to say, but no, I never do. I never knot them on the inside. And that's because uh, you don't need to, especially if you're making a uh, a piece where the inside is sewn closed. Um, yeah, you don't you don't ever need to do that. I'll actually show you. Um, I'm about to change colors for the dwarf's body in a second, and so I'll show you how I change colors and keep the colors from coming apart and keep the colors from. Uh, showing through your stitches without having to knot them or anything um, but you never you should never have to knot the, the colors um, so the next round is all gray slash beige stitches which means that I don't have enough of this beige yarn which is a problem let's see is this that's the same color I use this one Hello. Hi, Becky. Oh, did it did it close? Okay. Yeah. All right. Jules is Jules is coming to help my mom out. Um. Okay. So, uh, I guess we can keep going with this first beige color for a few more stitches first. Um. So let's get it ready. Now I'm, this is the last stitch. Let me zoom in here. We also need to get our gray yarn. This is gonna be the last stitch in my round, uh, Veronique, Veronique. Hi Casey, thanks for joining. Hope you're having a great day. Um, so this is gonna be my last stitch in the round in uh, this same color. This next round, I want to do stitches so that half of them are gray. So the top half of the stitches are gray and the bottom half are beige. Um, you wanna say hi real quick? You don't have to. Okay. I just have a meeting to get to. Hi everybody. I hope you're well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. Have a good have a good meeting. Thanks. Okay. So, do you want me to do it? No, I got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think Jimbo's going to be able to get in, but we'll find out. All right. So, uh, the first thing I want to do is get ready to finish the next stitch, right? So, I'm going to go in I'm gonna go halfway through a stitch and then I'm gonna get ready to change colors. So I'm gonna take this new color and I'm just gonna place it in between the two loops that are on the hook and this end attached to the ball of yarn. And then I'm gonna hold it down with the index finger of my dominant hand, which is my right hand here. 
just with my index finger. And then with my index finger of my non-dominant hand, I'm gonna place it in between the two colors like this. And then I'm just gonna flip the new color under the old one like that. I like, I always flip it this way. So it's, I guess it's clockwise. I always flip it clockwise. I, I mean, I can't even physically flip it counterclockwise, but yeah, flip it clockwise and then yarn over with the new color and then pull it through the two loops of the old color. And honestly, that should be fine. That should hold it in. It You, you shouldn't have a problem really. Um, just make sure that this tail end isn't too short or you might have a problem, but you know, that's long enough about, what is that? About maybe an inch. Um, uh, yeah, so that's that's basically how, how color changes work. If you're really worried about the color change coming through, then you might wanna crochet around it for a few stitches, but you should never knot it on the inside. It's just too, too much extra work. Now this round that I'm on right now is gonna be half gray, half beige, which means that the top of the stitch I want to be gray, and then the bottom I want to be beige. So after every single stitch that I do, I also wanna flip it back under so that beige is on top, go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through with beige and then switch back over to gray and then pull through two with gray. And I'm gonna do that for every single stitch here. And you'll see after a while, it's very repetitive and not actually that tough, but this is gonna make a really nice stripe. I know you weren't asking that, but just so you know. Um, okay. I hope that helps you. Uh, let me know if you want any more um, explanation when it comes to that. Okay, now let's zoom this back out. That's pretty good. Okay, well, let's keep on keeping on. Oop, hold on. Wait one sec. My uh, my website designer Jimmy is um, just asked, uh, "Hey, the dwarf pattern's free right now. I don't know if it's supposed to be." I'm like, "No, no, no, it is. Don't turn it off." <laughs> I was worried he was gonna switch it off. All right, good luck, Johnny. And I really hope that that battered cod tastes amazing. I'm super duper jealous. I'm a super jealous. Good night. Hey, Tata, how are you? Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing goodly. Wow, we got a lot of subscribers today. That's awesome. Thank you for subscribing if you're watching this live stream and you weren't subscribed already. I appreciate you. Doing these half color changes are always weird, but man, I just like them a lot. They, For me, they make crocheting so much fun. For like pretty much a year of, of my crochet life, I did like pretty much exclusive half color changes. And that's because I really, really like to do extreme color work in my patterns. Yes, honestly, Johnny, I would love, I would love the recipe. Because Jules and I love to uh, have fish, um, but we're not very good at cooking it. And we don't have a lot of recipes, so I would absolutely, totally appreciate that. Um, Becky, all right, see you later. Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed the live stream. Yeah, and I'll show you, uh, we'll, we'll see what this guy looks like at the end. We're gonna need, we're definitely gonna need suggestions on how to customize it later on. Yeah, Jules is pretty good at doing like, um, uh, battered like halibut for um, taco night, but we've never done beer battered. And uh, honestly, we could always use advice when it comes to that. Um, wow, we actually do have enough beige yarn. How awesome is that? How precise, so precise. Okay, so now I'm changing to brown yarn because I'm making the clothing. Okay, 
gray I like to pull tighter, and then beige I like to pull tighter. And we're all gonna be working into the back loops only, which means the back ones here. Boom. That first one I always like to work around the stitch just so it keeps it locked into place and then I keep going. Also, all these tips that I'm telling you about right now are actually in the video tutorials that I do. Um, so if you are like, like, wow, he, he knows how to give those tips really quick. That's because I do it all the time in all my videos, uh, just in case, you know, so if there's ever a part of the pattern that I'm like, ooh, someone might have a little problem with how to do these half color changes, for example, I always go through it, even if I've already said it a million times, because there's always that one person that might watch this video who's never seen any of my videos before and needs that extra help. Um, also, I've got to clean my glasses. <clears throat> Angel Cinder Dreams, crochet in a few days. My, uh, my friend and I are gonna crochet together for the first time and learn. She's bringing over tools and yarn too, so I get to learn. Congratulations, Angel. I really, really hope you like it. Um, uh, I think you will. Just be very patient, uh, especially be patient with your friend it's, if they're teaching you because it can be hard to teach and it can be hard to learn. Um, you just, the most important thing when it comes to learning how to crochet is being okay with being patient and being okay with uh, messing up a few times. Just like practicing any art, um, it's gonna take you a second to learn how to do it right. But the good thing is crochet is extremely forgiving uh, and it's uh, there's a lot of tutorials out there. And honestly, I think you can. I, I, I absolutely believe in you. I absolutely believe in you. I love crocheting, It's I mean, obviously. I'd say it's like thready printing, you know, because you're like, you're like crocheting, you're like making a piece of art, three dimensional piece of art with yarn, so it's thready. <laughs> but um, tsh. anyhow. Oh, you animate and make video games, dude. Angel, Cinder Dream. You gotta contact me. I've been looking for someone to help me make a video game for a long time. So if you're interested, uh, and anybody out there that makes video games, uh, I would, I'm would. i looking for help for sure on a game. And I would love your help. Sue Empire Coyote, what a name, love it. Uh, I also love your thumbnail. Way cool. Very simple. Uh, you find it very relaxing. I mean, me too. Me too, for sure. Okay, let's grab our gray yarn. And we actually don't need our extra beige yarn. I thought I might, but we actually don't, which is nice. So I'm going to wind it up, throw it into my big pile of crocheted things. Check out this new thing I learned how to do, by the way. Okay, wait, let me see. Let me see if I can do this right. Hold on. Add a source. Hold on. I hope I don't break my freaking thing for this, but. Uh, add a new source. Phone. Okay, I found out a new thing that you can do with I found out a new thing that you can do with your phone where you can actually like use it as like a mobile camera. Look how dope this is though. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. There we go. Check it out. So I can, I, look at that. This is my, this is my office. It's very messy, I know, but this is where I keep all my uh, spare yarn. You can see just a giant pile of spare yarn. I know it's very embarrassing. Very, very embarrassing, but nice. Disconnect. Okay. Okay. Back to it. Back to it. But isn't that a cool thing? I don't know what to use it for yet, but like, that's super cool to me. All right. Oh, 
Hopefully I didn't break my the webcam. Okay, pull through that. And we go four, one, two, three. That can't be right. Oh, oh, did I mess up? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I messed up somewhere. One, two, three. Yes, I totally messed up. I gotta go super far back. Dang it. Okay, we gotta go back. Sorry, I messed up. I did, I, I did the color changes at the wrong time and it totally messed up the rest of the pattern. And that's what I get for not using a stitch marker, you know? But that's okay. That's okay. I can fix. I can do this fix. We just need to do this color change a little bit earlier, but that's all right. Mistakes happen. I forgive myself. Okay, that's this is where the color changes are really supposed to start. I was like, why? But this isn't gonna line up, right? Sure enough. All right, well, let's try this again. I'm gonna go pretty quick here, just to catch up to where we were. And hopefully I have enough yarn. It might, I might have a difficulty doing this part again, but you know, I might, I might just be a little low on yarn, but eh, maybe we'll be all right. Maybe we'll be fine. We'll probably be fine, right? Right. Yeah, it took me a long time to get good at crocheting without a stitch marker, but even without a stitch marker, obviously I mess things up and that's okay. <laughs> it's what I get, you know, I deserve it. But it should be fine. Man, this would be crazy yarn chicken right now if I didn't know that I had enough yarn. I'd be like, oh, I'm running out but it should be enough. Hey, she'll be fine. Oh, well, welcome back, Becky. We had to go back, so you actually didn't miss anything at all, because I totally messed up where I started my color changes. Okay, see now here's where things are getting a little iffy. But we only have three more stitches, so I think we'll be all right. Huh? One. Ooh, hold on now. Hold on eh. All right, two. Actually, I don't think I do have enough yarn. We're gonna have to do a color change of this last, last gray, just to be safe. I mean, you won't be able to tell, but still. Two, and then three. And that's because I cut the gray yarn a little too early. All right, change to our brown yarn. There we go, okay. We're back, we're back. Well, we got one more round, but we're almost back. There we go. Boom, okay. Now I'm gonna cut all that yarn. We actually have a little extra beige, which doesn't make any sense. 
Okay. Whew. Let's get back to back to that. Our goal for likes uh, is uh, you mean for is that what you're talking about? What's our goal for likes? It's 200. How many do we have? Uh, you know what? My thing doesn't update, so I don't know how many likes this video has. But we're looking for we're aiming for 200 likes if we can. If we can't, well, that's okay too. What is a sizable horse like horse for? Wait, what's a sizable horse for a dwarf? Maybe like a pony? Is that what you mean? Like, because horses would be too. I don't think a dwarf could get up on a pony or on a horse without like some help from a taller individual 104 that's hey that's pretty good that's halfway there that's pretty good all right so we got we're almost done with this round one more right here perfect okay now we're back to where i'm supposed to be and we can start working on the armor for the dwarf Look at this. You see this? This here, if you can see it, that is a Jules hair. And do you know what? Jules hairs are everywhere. Jules hairs are everywhere. <laughs> she's got she's got very promiscuous hair likes to get into every nook and cranny of a house <laughs> oh dude linda thank you so much i really appreciate that linda that is a great way to support this channel too if you aren't able to support monetarily or you just want to help support in general is share um share club crochet art like uh share our patterns or uh, things that you make with our patterns on to other websites um, like Facebook groups like that. Uh, it's a great way to help spread the word and it's just very cool. Oh my God, Zoe, you're totally right. A capybara would be the cutest mount for a dwarf. That is such a cute idea. <laughs> I love that. All right, we are, um, now I got to do these gray bits to make our armor. I think we're going to go under armor but see I, I actually crochet around a stitch to make different looking stitches which kind of looks like a uh, it kind of looks like mithril or or you know like chain mail and it's really easy to do so I really like that one two three four five and this will be six yeah Seven more. A wombat? Mountain goats? Oh, mountain goats. Yeah, totally. Totally mountain goats, actually. That makes the most sense. Or goats. For sure. Especially mountain goats. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, cool. We are on track. And then we change it around. And then I work in the back loops only. Got it. There's one. Okay. Gray yarn is done, which is nice. We'll have to come back with a different shade of gray if we're going to make a helmet or something like that. Uh, Veronique. Veronique. Uh, asks, is it possible?
possible to be a, uh, to have a membership from another country? Absolutely, yes, 100%. Um, you do not need to be uh, in America to have a Club Crochet membership. You totally can. Uh, if you need any help, just let me know um, and uh, just email me. Uh, we can you can email me at contact at clubcrochet.com if you need help with your sign up process. But uh, you totally can, and it's a great way to support the channel. So if you can and you would like to, it would be very appreciated. Um, okay, so now we're making feet, uh, and for the feet, I'm actually using a full size bobble stitch. One. Two, three, and oopsies, there we go. Four. Actually, that last stitch I think I can do again. There we go. I messed that up just slightly. See that little line? But whatever. Whatever. I don't even care. All right. And then three, one there. Dude, I totally, I mean, I have this in, I, so Becky, Becky said, uh, I feel like you need a whole house for all the things you've crocheted. I mean, absolutely. Here, you wanna see, let's see if I can do that camera thing again. For you. Did it work? Add it to the camera listing? How do I do that? There, look at this. Okay, this is, this is all, like, first off, don't make fun of me for how messy this is because I know it's extremely messy. There's a bunch of crochet back here, uh, a bunch of stuff down here. Here's, here's poor little Jack Gurgle under a bunch of stuffing. But this is what I really wanna show you. It's just piles, <laughs> giant boxes filled with crochet. I, I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, that's how, that's only like a section. Look, we got, our, we got our giant wall of burbs there. I mean, they're all over the place. I am clearly not the most cleanly of uh i'm not the most cleanly of sorry there we go uh yeah no need for explanation yes it's very messy um i'm not the most cleanly of uh of uh crafters one two three single crochet two together Oh no, sorry, one, and then a single crochet two together. I'm a very, I'm a very messy crafter and I do my best. This is actually not that messy uh, compared to normally. <laughs> Whoops. It ain't messy, then you ain't creating. Oh, yes, you're right, Linda. I don't have to stop and push it out. That's because I'm like consistently pushing it as I make it. So like as I go here, like I'm just going to make sure that it stays like outward. I'm like keeping it on the outside. But if I don't do that, it will go on the inside. You can see it kind of indenting already. Three, here's four. And see, if I don't mess with it, it will indent. But see, at the very end there, I pull it tighter and I push it out like that. It's almost like seamless the way I do it because it's just, it, uh, it's just like muscle memory. There we go. There's our feet. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I have like the perfect amount of yarn for this pattern. <laughs> yeah, it, it's hard. I mean, as a crafter, I totally feel that, Zoe. It is hard. 
it is very difficult to uh, stay clean and organized. I have a very messy brain. My brain is like, you should see my to-do list. Oh my gosh, I have a million to-do lists. One, two. It's the only way I can make sure that like, everything works together. I'm sure I probably have like a low level ADD, uh, but I make it work at this point, so I don't really mess around with it. Okay, so next we're going to do uh, our face. So I, I can't find my bottle of eyes for my six millimeter. Oh no, they're right here. I do have a bottle of eyes for six millimeter. I'm just running out. I gotta add more to it. Look at these wood shavings from last week. We'll probably have more wood shavings today, actually. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. So we're gonna add the eye. We're, I mean, I'm gonna make the majority of this dwarf uh, like normal. It's the facial hair and the weapons and the and the hat that I'm gonna need your help on. Um, and I think we're actually on to, oh no, you know, we're gonna do the hair after this, um, after we finish the body. So I will be asking for your opinions when it comes to that. Oh, hey Sarah, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Yes, absolutely, Casey. I think I need dwarf, I think I need hobbits, I need gnomes. Uh, and I really want to make elves and I've tried to make a few different elf patterns, but the very, the difficult thing that I have, uh, when it comes to making elves is the mouth. I have a hard time like figuring out how to, how I want to make the mouth, um, for the little crochet thing. Cause normally I just don't even add mouths to it, but when it, the goblins have mouths, the cobalts have mouths and I kind of feel like elves need mouths too. So my current thought process is if I do a mouth using like the same technique that I do with the, the, um, the fungoids. So they have like a, like I use like thread to like embroider a mouth on. I'm thinking that might be a good way, but I don't know. I've, I've done a few elves in the past and I, I'd like to do more. Um, we're going to use a, a little bit of our, excess thread which is the longest one that's a good one um i'm gonna use this excess thread to add uh eyelids under the eyes and i i do that with these dwarfs because it gives it so much more character i think you probably heard me say that before but um it's true i really like to add eyelids because of that it, it adds it adds a lot of personality i think to my pieces I, for some reason, I always feel like if something looks tired, it looks more real. And I, maybe it's just because I'm always tired, <laughs> but I do have that opinion. There we go, one. And double knotted will be our first eyelid. See? So I just add a little, like the tiniest bit and look at this eye and then look at that eye. See how much like character, just that little tiny bit adds to it. Isn't that crazy? I just love it. I love it. Honestly, I could crochet in the back loop only here and make that eyelid without even having to sew something on. That's probably not a bad idea in the future. But for now, we'll just do it the way I do. Cross and then up down to here, like that. Great, great. Hey, add-ons world, how are you? Sunshine asks, oh, great, great question, Sunshine. Sunshine says, Louis, my grandson, just ask me to make them a stitched game set only I don't know the rules for the game. Well, that's easy Here I'll put it in the chat, but it's just stitched the game.com I even purchased like a bunch of different versions of that URL so that if you spell it wrong, you'll still end up there the game dot com 
I don't know. Oh, that didn't. Well. Cooper, if you could put the, like, a legit link in the description for stitchthegame.com, that would probably be great. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Cosmo, Five Worlds Explorer, says, it looks like an elf now. It does kind of look like an elf now. I think that what would make it apart from an elf is if it was tall and had a skinny neck. Kind of like how I did this guy. So he's got like the skinny neck. Same as trolls. I think that would give more of an elf look. Okay. Cool. All right. We have got our heads sewn on. Now we need to add our arms. So we're gonna be using our pipe cleaner for this. And we're gonna fold it in half. And we're gonna cut it and waste these scissors because they're already dull. I do not care. Is that too long? Heck yeah, it is. I think we can, well, whatever. We'll just use the full thing and then sew it closed. All right. I'm gonna really make this a very tightly wound pipe cleaner so that it has as much like bendability as possible. So that it holds its shape when we sew it on. That's long enough for one of them. Ding. Put the pipe cleaner in the arm. Kinda, maybe, if I can. There we go. Like that. And then we're going to pull it really tight. We're gonna wind it on the inside so it doesn't come apart. And I know this is a long pipe cleaner, but we're just gonna go ahead and just bend it up into the body. We're gonna bend it like Beckham. I don't really know what that means. Because he bends well? I don't know. I don't know sports good like. Bend it like Min Min. Now that I understand. Because <laughs> I'm a dork. Okay. Still talking to myself. I'm, a, I'm alive. Right, here we go. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Five Worlds Explorer says that we should make this dwarf like a farmer and give it a like a Vietnamese farmer hat. I like that, We're using the buttons. Mm -hmm. Oh, and give it an animals that he can ride in the fields. That's an interesting idea. I don't hate it, I don't hate it. Oh, it's all good, Cooper. You're super duper helpful. You do not have to ever apologize. <laughs> Let's add this other arm. I really like the idea of using one of these buttons as a hat, for sure. Um, I just think that's just a fun idea in general, instead of giving him a shield. But we could also make a hat like um, our dwarf that was added to our cubes of glory last week. I'll pull that down in a second. I'll show you the hat options that we will have. And I will get your opinion on that. Before we sew on our arms. This is his, that's how his arms look. Didn't that look great? Hello. <laughs> um, okay, so this was donated by Mushroom Farm. Oh wait, I forgot to put that there. Their name is Snorrinson, I think, by Tom the Yeti. Uh, and so we can give it a hat like this. This is a good farmer tool too. Um, but we can give him a hat like that maybe. That's a very farmer-like hat. But I think what Cosmo is saying is like basically using a button, not this button. Probably this like really big one, like that. And have, it, have their hair like poke out of it and we could like tie the hair up. 
Maybe the smaller one will work better. Oh, that's not bad. Like that? You know? I kind of like the smaller one. I don't know. What do we think? We'll, we'll, we'll do a vote in the chat. Um, but we need to make... That's going to be our last edition anyhow. So let's put this back for Tom. Snoring sin. Right back into your cube of glory. Hey, if you want to support for over 50 bucks, you can get added to the cube of cubes of glory. Okay, this arm's going to go right here. That. We're not going to forget to stuff the arm, but I'll do that in a second once I get a few of these, a few parts of it sewn on. I think we'll start like right here, go down to there. There, there, and there. Right here. Oh, right here. Yes, 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 yes. There, there, and there. Can I show all the dwarves I've made? Sure. I can. Some of them are not that great, but you know, that comes with the territory. Um, let me count. Let me finish on this on first. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, one, two. So we're gonna go up to here. Like that. And then we'll stuff it. Where is our stuff and stick? Oh, here it is. I knew I had one somewhere. Maybe if I wasn't so messy, I would be able to find my tools easier. What a novel idea. One of our arms almost done sewing on. Just a few more stitches. We got one, two, three more stitches. One. Wait, one. Yeah, that should go one. Two. Oh, no, wait. No, wait, 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 wait. We should take this back down to here. And then go up it. Yes, 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 yes. Go over the gray because we're going to sew on armor, shoulder pads rather. There we go. That stitch was fighting back. It was like, I don't want to be sewn on. I don't want this dwarf to have an arm. I was like, too bad, buddy. You're gonna have an arm and you're gonna like it. Oh. Good luck, Onyx. <laughs> yes, it always does wind down as time goes, and that's totally okay. I do not mind that at all. Okay, we got an arm sewn on. His eyelid is acting a little funky, so we're gonna just stuff that in there a little bit better. There we 
there we go. Okay, let's let's pull out the, the dwarves that I've made so far. Um, so we got I got this one that I made. This is one of the first ones I made. Super duper hairy. Um, this is one of my favorites. Mr. I think I called him Mr. P or Mr. Mr. D. I don't know. But you know, he's modeled off of Mr. T. Um, here's another one that I made. I think I made this one for the video tutorial. There's one that I can't find. He's somewhere and he's got, he's like clad in armor and he's got a big shield. And I just don't know where I put him. Is he in the corner? Yeah, I don't know where he's at. He looks super duper cool though. And I can't find him. I really need to find him though. And we got the one up here from Tom. Um, I've got this one who I call a gore, a, a dork because he's a dwarf and an orc put together because he's kind of got green. I made him by accident actually. Uh, I got a few in my bag here, I think. This one, I got, do I have any more in here? I thought I had like one red one. No, I, th I think this is my last one, except for the super armored one that I can't find. Uh, this is actually the first one I made. You can kind of see how how it's evolved since. But yeah, I think those are all my doors. Look how big the arms are on this guy. He's got fat arms. You can't even bend them. You can't touch them together. Uh, nope, can't do it. But yeah, those are all my dwarves that I have so far. Let's go to his back. There. And I'll find my armored guy eventually. He's hiding, he's protecting something very well. I just don't know where. Oh well. All right, let's keep sewing on arms. Yeah, the one in the thumbnail. Exactly. I don't know where I put him. I think I like hit him somewhere. Oh, you know what? Maybe he's hidden. No. Sometimes I hide things behind picture frames. But that's not what I did. No, he's just lost. Lost in the ether. Okay, let's sew on this other arm. What color skin yarn did you use uh, for this guy? Um, it's the, I think the name of the yarn is Jute. Is uh, this uh, beige skin tone? Um, for the uh, Mr. T one, uh, it's um, brown. Uh, it's actually a discontinued color of brown uh, from Lion Brand Cotton Yarn. I don't think they make it anymore. Uh, so it's very, I have just like a very, very small amount left. And uh, I use it very sparingly because it's a very rich brown. It's almost like a rust brown. And I love it. And I can't find any yarn that's close to it right now. So, now, Jules and I have a friend named Jude. Uh, in San Francisco who owns a craft store up there called Growing Up's Arts and Crafts. You should check it out. But she always says, so. So me and Jules always do that. We go, so. She's super cute and sweet. I, I love Jude. For the one with the black beard, that would be, that would be, where did I just put him? Oh, here. This one? Yeah, he's got, he's got like a, that's the rich brown that I was telling you about. So the brown that I'm using right now is actually this brown, which I used for the nose. But the skin tone is like this rich, like, like super nice brown color that I can't find a good cotton to match it because it's discontinued.
but I'm working on it. And I'm actually, I'm actually working on making it, getting the yarn made because I'm working on getting club crochet branded yarn made. That's, that's on the low, low down. That's on the low key. Don't tell no one. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. One, two. Wait. One, two. I'm going to be cutting it close here. Uh, if, if this pattern always free, no, it is going to be free today only or until I remember to make it free again or until I remember to make it a uh, membership exclusive, which in all likelihood will probably be on uh, over the weekend. So you have a few days, but it will not forever be free to answer your initial question. One, two, three, one, two, we'll be down here, All right? And then three will be where we started. Perfect. Veronique uh, says that in their area, it's difficult to find good cotton yarns and wools. Where do you live? For me, it's pretty easy to find cotton yarns, um, uh, but uh, honestly, I like get mine in bulk, so it's a, you know that makes it a lot easier to find yarn when I order like thousands of them at one time. Ooh, there we go. I almost messed that up. Oh, I did mess it up. I don't even know how to fix this. Oh wait, no, I think I can fix it. I can fix this. I sound like, uh, I don't know what the actor's name is, but he's the guy from Psych who is named Gus in Psych and he is in the movie Holes, the movie with Shia LaBeouf. And he's in the flashback cutscenes where he goes, I can fix that. Super niche, super niche reference there. And the fact that I even know what that act, the actor, <laughs> that's a silly, that's a silly connection. But I found it and I can fix that. You're in Switzerland, Geneva. Geneva is very small, I've heard. How do I, ooh, Emerald Turtle, good question. Uh, a lot of good questions today. Uh, Emerald Turtle says, I love the techniques. I've learned a few new things. Thanks. Um, I'm inspired to create my own Ami grooming patterns. Have you ever been frustrated with the process? How do you get past it? Great question. Um, I have been frustrated with the process very, very often. I'm actually currently frustrated with the process of making a cactus. Uh, and the reason is because I'm making five different cactuses and one of them is being difficult with me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, my, my, uh, answer to that question is, uh, put it down, come back to it. Uh, think when you need to think outside the box or you need to think about something, you need to be clever about something. Um, and you're having a difficult time being creative. Uh, it's always good to set it down and come back, uh, because you'll come back with, uh, with a new light and new ideas and it'll make things a little bit easier for you. That's my first suggestion. Um, also, go to your thinky place. Uh, for me, I have a spot where I really like to think about certain stuff, uh, just like start a mental room, basically, where I can just sit down and think. Uh, my place is in bed when I'm trying to fall asleep, which is probably not the best place to have my thinky spot, but honestly, I get my best ideas right there, right before I fall asleep. Um, that's always good, uh, but yeah, giving your your 
brain space to think and space to get uh, to do some problem solving is usually a good good move. Um, don't get too frustrated. It's just yarn. It's gonna be all right. Um, uh, draw draw a lot. Uh, that that's a huge tip, um, especially when you're crocheting amigurumi and you're a beginner. Uh, drawing out your ideas a little bit more before you actually make them uh, is usually a really good idea uh, because. It'll help you just solidify what parts go where, how you're going to make certain piece, pieces. Um, I don't draw all of my amigurumi, and that's because like I do like to just kind of go with the flow sometimes with the yarn. Um, but I've also crocheted a lot. You know, I've done a lot of designs now, so I've gotten really good at it. Uh, drawing always will still help me, though. It's always a good idea to just draw. Just draw. A little bit even if you're not a good drawer it gives you it gives your brain like a way to um part is the wrong word but like to like figure out the logistics of how something's going to be made i think is the best way to say it like logistics is really important when it comes to amigurumi because sure you can have an idea but if you don't know how it's logically going to be made like how where what stitches are going to go where it can be you can go off the rails sometimes and you can kind of make something that just makes no sense um, i was working on a pot yesterday uh, i'm i'm doing a crochet pattern for a uh, a pot for a bonsai tree because i have my bonsai tree pattern but i really needed a pot and i went and i started crocheting it and I started it all wrong and I started to just like get really frustrated because I kept making it and I kept going and I, I had this, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, dual, dual hill. Yeah, that is, that is his name. Uh, I love that guy. Um, uh, do you know what sunk cost fallacy is? Um, it's super good thing to know. Sunk cost fallacy is when you are, uh, so deep in making something that you don't realize that you're wasting a bunch of time. So for example, if I was crocheting, um, I was crocheting a pot and I started it with um, eight stitches around. Okay, so this is a very specific thing. But I started with eight st stitches around instead of six stitches because I thought, okay, well, it'll become bigger quicker and I need to only use, I only have a hundred feet of yarn to use for this. So I need to make sure that I can make it with just that amount of feet. So I thought, okay, if I start it big, blah, blah, blah. Well, I started it and I kept going, starting with eight stitches and then going to 16, blah, blah, blah. And it went like, it started to like fold out and made it really weird. And I was like, okay, it's fine. It'll fix when I keep going. And then I got like halfway done with this whole piece and it just still wasn't looking right. And I I got to that, that point where I was like, okay, do I undo everything that I did and look at the last three hours as a waste of time or do i keep going and make something that i'm not really proud of but i didn't waste three hours of my life and then i thought you know what this is the sunk cost fallacy this is a waste of time like me finishing this is even more of a waste of time because i'll just have something that i don't even like i need to go back i need to undo it and i need to look at those three hours and say you know what these weren't wasted three hours i never would have known what i meant up with if I didn't get to that point so that's what sunk cost fallacy is and you can really get into that with crochet um, especially if you're making a larger crocheted thing uh, so don't be afraid basically don't be afraid to go back and redo it it's it's a good move it really is it's not a bad idea to go back and redo it if you really think that that's the better way to do things um, I always say crochet your pieces like at least like four five times before you before you release a pattern and that's because like you need to make it over and over to know what you're doing i mean that's easier to said than done when it comes to amigurumi but uh it's true like that's that's just how i don't know that's how it works for me at least Sorry, I got kind of like carried away with that um, that advice, but hopefully I didn't get too carried away.
Okay, so we got our arms. We got them. Actually, we're actually almost done with this guy, uh, with the body at least. Um, after this, we're going to be doing adding hair and stuff, and I will be needing your advice for that. But we're done with the majority of this guy. So I'm just going to go ahead and stuff him a little bit right now. Um, I'm using a lot of extra thread of stuffing, which might be a problem later on, but maybe we'll be all right. The reason I think it might be a problem is when I make the facial hair, um, I accidentally might pull through some of that thread that I just stuffed it with, but we can deal with that problem when it comes up or uh, we won't have a problem at all. Yes, I was in the zone. Um, ooh, people are asking about left-handed crocheting. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but I actually have a left-handed crocheting channel. Um, we have a club crochet channel that's specifically for left-handed patterns. Uh, and that's where I upload all my left-handed tutorials. It doesn't have a whole bunch right now because I need to go back and like re-upload a lot of them. But if you want to find it, uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, um, under recommended channels, I think you should be able to find it there. Um, yeah. But yeah, there is like a secondary channel. I, I haven't really talked about it very much because I, I want to upload a lot more left-handed videos there and I just haven't had the time to do that. But yeah, for anybody looking for a more lefty tutorial, that's where I'm going to put them. Okay. All right. Now let's sew this guy closed. I would like to stuff him with a nickel if I can. I always like to stuff my characters with nickels simply because I like to add that extra little bit of weight, but I don't know if I have any nickels left. I think I might have used them all. Where would I have them if I did have nickels? Where would I keep them? I know. Oopsies. Aha! I knew I had an extra one here. I always keep one in my bag. It's perfect. I gotta I gotta refill on nickels though. Don't have enough. Okay, nice and tight, and we have got a bald dwarf that looks super cute, actually. All right, now is when I need your advice. What we need first? Um, uh, Zoe, that is so freaking cute of an idea, and I love it. I love it, I love it. I love that. I'll talk about that in a second, but um, what do I need? Oh yeah, your help. Uh, we're gonna do hair. Um, so we got that color. We can do this 
crazy maroon color. You know what? I do have another dwarf somewhere that's maroon. Um, what other colors? We got brown. Okay. I don't think this blue one's a good idea. Yeah. No, we're not we're not crocheting ninja as a dwarf. Let's see. Let's see. I like this rich red. It's got rich red, brown, orange, gray. I think those are good colors. Okay. So our options are these four. One, two, three, four. So we're going to go, we're going to go gray, brown, red, or orange. I'm going to put a poll. Start a poll. What color hair? Uh, I'm going to go left to right. Red, Orange, brown, or gray. Boom. In the chat, you got your opportunity to vote. I personally, I kind of want to go with red, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm super curious of what you guys choose. Ooh, Novi, first off, Nov, welcome to the chat, uh, said gray for rock and stone. Do I have blonde? Oh, I, blonde would have been funny. Um, wool is fun. No, so this is actually, here, this is the brand. It's called Buttercream Angel Hair. Uh, I don't even know if this is available anymore, but I get it from Joanne Crafts, and it's like an acrylic wool polymide i don't even know what polymide is but it's a blend of that uh this is actually the same brand i think but under a different name angel hair that's what it's called so. <laughs> becky wants a grandpa Ooh, it is a torn vote okay cool 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 i like i like where this is going fight 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 okay in addition to that i need we need to make a big We need to make a tool for him. So I really think what would be cool. Oh, I have this button too for the head. Okay, wait, hold on. Let's cut this free. So we got this button. Throw that away. We got. These cute, I mean, look at how cool these buttons are. I thought these would make really unique, like, I don't even know. I honestly had no idea what I'm going to use these for. They're just so cool looking. Don't they look neat? They're like, I don't know. Something about them is really cool. But the one that I'm looking for, I had it before. Where did I put it? Ah, here it is. This big honker. Now, how cool would a weapon be with this thing? Does that not look awesome? It looks like it could be like a dragon tooth or something, you know? And I'm thinking if we have two of these and we go through one and then we go through the other and then we tie them together, I, it might be hard to get it in their hand, but dang, would that look dope. That looks so freaking cool. It looks like a giant hammer or a giant, I don't know, man. Or we could split this and we could make it go through both ends. I'm just afraid it'll look like too fragile. Like maybe if we go like, let's see, let's just see. I'm, I'm curious if this works. I mean, we can get more of these uh, skewers, but I'm curious of what this looks like. So this is how I make some weapons is I'll cut it in the center of the 
So like basically they split the stick like that. And then we'll put like, put the scissors in there and we'll just split it up. And this is actually how they used to make weapons a long, long time ago. And you just split it far enough. And then these two ends go in like that. It's actually kind of backwards like this. And then I tie it together like that. Which is pretty cool, but honestly, this feels like too small of a um, of a stick for such a big, big top. So we might need to find something different for that. Or, or make him a smaller tool. We don't need that enough. But we'll probably use this in a little bit. Um, okay. So what did you guys decide on? I'm waiting for one more vote. Oh my god, it's perfectly tied between red and gray. We're looking for one more vote. Ooh, a tree branch. I could go outside right now and grab a tree branch. Ooh, still waiting for that vote. Okay, what what was the, someone said snowshoes. Something should be used for snow. Oh, you think these ones for snowshoes? I actually think, hold on. I had another one in here that would make perfect snowshoes. Where were they? They're like a, also we might wanna make a backpack. Look at this cute gold button. That's like way cool. We got this giant canvas one too. That'll work. We're just gonna get all our buttons ready so that I can make whatever y'all want. Man, I swear I had these like super sick buttons though. Super, dude, they were like so sick. Ah, here they are. These would make good snowshoes, wouldn't they? These also would make a really fun looking ax. Especially if we end up deciding to make him a farmer. Like, look, that would be such a cool ax. Like, like vertical ax, you know? Oh, shoot, we got enough votes. Oh, you guys chose gray. What a gray t choice. I like it. And pull. Ba boom. Okay. The choice has been made, and you are going to be an old dwarf. Old man dwarf. All right. So we're going to start with his facial hair. And we're going to get. I don't want to open this. I just want to use a little bit. Which means we got to find the end. I don't know where the end is. Ah, oh, there's the end. Okay. So I just, I don't want to like pull off the, this because I want to keep it like together. So we're just going to like pull out some of this gray yarn bit by bit. That's pretty cool. Old man dwarf. We gotta give him big eyebrows too. I feel like old men always have big eyebrows. Okay. This is a good start. Cut it in half. This is way more than I need. Actually, I'm gonna cut these in half too. Okay. I'm gonna use one of these. All right, so we're gonna start with our ear hair. I always like to start with my ear hair and then move on to the facial hair. Actually, I need even less than that. And we're gonna go boom, boom, yeah, like this. So how, this is how I make hair. Um, this is in the pattern, but I, I just go in with a crochet hook 
around the ear like that. Actually, I think it can go. Yeah, that's probably fine. This one, this one. We'll pull a bit of this yarn through. Like that. And then I yarn over and pull through all of it like that. And that's a good start. Just like that. So I start with the ears. Go. Ears. That. Okay. So we start with ear hair. Oh my gosh, he's looking so old already. And then we need one of these for his nose hair. At least one. Yeah, you know what? I think one is. So is that going to be long enough? It might. Okay. Let's cut it in half. And then we do the same thing. We loop it like this. Then I like to go under the nose like this, boop, boop. And just pull that through the nose and then we'll tie everything together. Okay, so this is how I tie it together. First, we want ears. I gotta remember how I do this. This goes over that like this and then it goes into the middle like that and then I tie it in. So we need um, some yarn to tie it all down with which we're gonna use our gold yarn. And we'll use half of this. We don't need it at all. Like that. Go out from the back of the ear, right above the shoulder bit right here. And we're gonna go, we want the Mustache to go above the beard. Above it like that. There we go. Okay. Go around it once. Like this. And back into the stitch. And then we'll come out right above the foot. That. Actually, you know, let's go right in the center of this stitch right there. Yes, like that. Don't put those too tight. Okay. Um, we want the beard to get pulled over, but we're cool with the mustache being sewn down. Or we can have it all come in through the middle. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it all through the middle instead of having the beard separated. So next we'll need it to go up through the opposite side right here. Get this other side of the mustache prepared. Mustache goes over the ear hair, so we go like this. One, two, like that. Make a little X. I agree with Becky. Like this video if you haven't already yet. Now we're gonna go around this once. Okay. And then around it again. Back into our piece. And then we'll come up through right here where the mouth would be. Like that. You gotta make sure everything is tied tightly, but not like crazy tight. And then we're just gonna use all of it. Um, I'm gonna cut this bit in half. And is there any other bit that needs to be cut off? No. And then we'll just come out to the middle. Um, we need a little bit more of this. Is that for the mustache? Oh, the mustache is a little less than we'd like, but that's okay. We're just going to twist it together. And we're going to go down 
find it. Around it. Back in. Now we're gonna come out through the bottom. We'll do the same thing. Okay, this is starting to come a little bit together. We need to pull that one a little tighter. This one a little tighter. Okay. And we need to go around just one more time here so that we can keep the whole beard sewn down. Unless we want it to be like loose. Actually, you know what? I kind of do like the idea of being like loose at the bottom here. Just, it'll look like so much bigger. We actually, it might be kind of fun to make it really long, like a super duper long beard. That kind of could be funny. So, we'll go ahead and stick with this right now. I don't think he's going to have very much hair at all. But, let's see what we can do with the hair situation. Close. Stuff that knot in there. And let's cut the beard a little shorter, just like. I, I like to like cut the beard like consistently changing like where the cuts are so that it looks like frayed almost. Yes, that's a beard. Oh my god. I actually love how long that beard is. Maybe it's a little long. <laughs> it's maybe it's a little bit long, but not bad. Um, okay, so we got our old man beard on there. Definitely, for sure, needs some eyebrows because old man needs the eyebrows. And I think what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come out, start from the top of the head here and then come out and do eyebrows so that way we give him a little bit of hair at the same time as we make his eyebrows. But old man dwarf needs his brows. Oh my god. Look how like grumpy. Oh, I love it. He's going to look so like inquisitive. Like, what are you doing? I don't understand kids nowadays. On the ticky talkies. What? Huh? Okay. Now here's what I was kind of thinking is we could give him a hat. Oh my god, he looks like such a wise dwarf with this hat on. I feel like this is too weird. Let's try what what does this one look like? That one's not bad. A little too yellow though. This one's pretty good. Nice and simple. Let's try this one and see what happens. So I'm thinking if we go through one, like that, and then we go through another. I mean, we can make it like sewn around his head too though we'll try both so we can fit my crochet hook in there so that makes things a little easier because here's what i'm thinking we put the hat on like this right and then we can even add another little bit to this so that it gets like sewn on correctly hair needs to be sewn on out through different spots. For this method to work. 
But do we like the idea of a button hat? Let me know in the comments because I, I, I can't undo it once I do it. Hi, Lonnie. How are you doing? How you been? So I'm kind of thinking we go one and out through this one right here instead. So that the hair is like coming out through two different spots on the top of his head, which is funny in and of itself. Kind of looks like he's got little bunny ear hair. But then when we sew it onto this, it'll keep the hat in the same direction that we want it to be. So we go one. And two. You know? Like that. And then what we can do is we can add one more bit to it. So that it goes around and under the beard and around the ears. Let's try that. Um, I think we want kind of like a thread situation. So maybe like a, um, maybe not an, a white, but maybe if we could find like an off white or a tan. Not like skin tone though. We want different than that. This is like an off-white. That could work. Let's try this. Let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens. If we don't like it, we can get rid of it. We like the button hats. Okay, thank you, Christine. I appreciate your advice and your feedback. Sometimes it's hard to do things without a little bit of help. A little bit of like, yeah, do this, do that. I have a difficult time making decisions. I don't know if you ever noticed that. I laugh because obviously, right? It's pretty obvious. There's a reason I ask for help all the time. Cause I don't know what I'm doing. See, so I'm thinking like if it goes like this and then it goes around the ears, then under the head, then it looks like it's actually tied onto his face, tied onto his head, around the ears. And I'm probably gonna sew it on around the ears, but you know, it'll go down here and then I'll knot it together down there. And then it'll keep his hat on his head. Like that. And then these two up here will get double knotted on as well. Do we like this idea? Because I cannot undo it once I do this. I mean, I can, but it'll just be a whole process. I don't know though. I don't know if we need the button hat. Yes, we're pretty close to the end, uh, uh, Christina. I think we'll end around six, so in about half an hour, because I still want to make a little weapon for him. Zoe? Zoe is a genius. Zoe is a genius. Everybody say it. You know we got, but we got beads. These beads might work. Actually, I think I got better beads than that even. We could use that cool button. We could use one of these to go on it. Ooh, what do we think? No, that's too much. Maybe, I don't know. Feels like it's maybe too much though. I think I got more beads though in here. Or I don't. And I don't know where my beads are. Now this is not what I was looking for, but uh, this is a really cool button. Mm. No, we don't have a name yet, but we do need name suggestions. So let's um. I can actually do that. Let's do a... Uh... Name... 
Okay, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I started a Q and A. So that you can ask, uh, you can give me uh, name suggestions. So go ahead and put the name suggestions in the Q and A, and I think that'll work best for us. Um, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of like iffy about this whole string holding the hat on. You know what, I got something else that might work. What if we use like this, so it's twine? He looks like he's getting, I mean, every time I add something to this guy, he looks a little bit crazier than before, but I mean, not that that's a problem, I'm just saying. So like, maybe if we use this twine and I, and I like thread it so that it's split up a little bit, you know, so it's smaller. This is like really thick. So if we do this, Getting our station very messy. But, now if we use this instead, maybe even just one string of it, like this, you know? That might look a little cooler. Grandpa Dave! Oh yes, the names are coming in. It's working. It's working. Okay, cool. Um, let's start by adding the. Let's, let's do um. Where where did I put those beads? Right here. I'd say a brown one was a good one move. I'm hoping this is not too skinny of a bead though. I have a feeling this is gonna be just a little too small of a bead. Because I don't even know if this yarn is going to fit in it. We're going to need to use this super sharp needle. And I don't even know if I can thread this yarn onto this needle. But we can try it. it can I... Do I have a better needle? Oopsies. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit you, Mr. Camera. Oh, will this go through the bead? No, there's no way, right? Yeah. Maybe this side will, though. Okay, that side will. So maybe if I just put the yarn right where the bead will go, and then I can push it through. Oh, that's why I grabbed an extra one. Get back here. Okay. Let's try this again. What's a needle? Threader. You can you can use it. There's like a tool for threading needles. No, I can't get through that with it. Okay. Music stopped. There we go. Keep it on shuffle. All right. Where to get my light box? My light box is from a company called Foldio. F O L D I O. So I don't know if this is going to work at all. I can't thread this yarn. It's it's just too Look at the the hole is just too tiny. And the yarn is just too big. Can't I don't think it's even possible. I need is just barely threaded though, right? Okay, now let's see if this will go in. There's no way, man. There's no way. No. I can't get it in there.
No. I don't think it's possible. <laughs> Man, I just changed the metal. Oh, wait. It looks like it's making it through. Right? Maybe? Maybe there's another needle from the other side and I push it through. There's no way I'm going to fit both cut those <laughs> both strands through it, though. That's impossible. Come on. Come on. I'm going to break this needle. Oh, I did it. Look at that. I did it. Wow. That should not have been... That should not have happened. That looks super cool on there, though. <laughs> I don't think I can do both, though. I don't. I honestly don't think there's enough room for both of those to fit in there. But gosh, that looks super cool. Maybe. No, there's no way, dude. There's no way. That was so hard to do already. Grab my Dave. Oh, dude, Adelaide, thank you so much. Oh, Linda, I wish you could give me a bead too. All I got is these itsy bitsy beads. I mean, they're super cute, but like, they're so tiny. Okay. All right, it's threaded. I don't think I can fit in here, but you know what? I'm nothing if not not a quitter. Okay, this is gonna be tough. <sighs> Oopsies. Ah, I did it! <sighs> Hot ta cha! Look at that! Look at that! That's not even coming off. I there, I literally couldn't. Wow. Wow. We did it. We're pros. Look at that. And you know what's really funny? Is that? That's his eyebrow hair. <laughs> his eyebrow hair is coming off the top to hold it all together. Oh my gosh, that's so epic. Okay. All right, how, okay, now what? I mean, I don't even think we need anything else to like connect this onto the head anymore. Like this holds onto the head so well. I think all we need is a weapon and we can cut this a little shorter. Yeah, now do his beard. Ha ha, very funny. There's no way, dude. Um, we need to cut the hair shorter though, right? Like he can't have this long, well. Well, actually, maybe we just cut this one shorter, like that. And then he's just got like two ridiculously long strands of hair coming out the top of his hat. Oh, that actually, he looks like a wide, like he looks like he's gonna be standing on top of a mountain and he's gonna give you advice about life. Wow, that looks pretty epic, not gonna lie. His beard is so long. Okay, so we want to add what now? I mean, or or if we cut it small enough, it can just stick straight up. His hair will just stick straight up. Put a regular third under the bend of wool, then pull the third through the needle. Oh, dude, Kenda, I think I get what you're saying. That that would have been a good good fix. Braid his hair. Oh, Aryan, you can get the pattern right here. It's at clubcrochet.com slash dwarf. Uh, there's also a link in the description. Maybe we'll just start by like weaving or like if we did this. My gosh, what if he had another button though? No, I can't. I can't. There's too many buttons. Um, we need to give him a weapon. Let's start making his weapon. Ah, there's a fly. Mm. I don't like flies. They freak me out. Okay. 
We need... We can totally use this for our weapon, though. We need, next, um, a stick. Ba -ba -ba -ba. And whatever, we're, however we're going to make the weapon. I kind of want to make the weapon... I don't want to make it like this. Let's do that split method again. So I'm just going to cut this one in half like this. Just to split it open. And then I'll just use a needle. Just pull it down like that to split it open even more. And then these two ends both go into the sides of the there, like that. Is that too small? Or is that good? If he had it like this. It doesn't look like much of a weapon, I guess. This one might look better. But I've already made one like that. Let's try. Mm. No, it's too 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 tiny of a bead. We could go. We could also try to do instead of it going on it like this, we could make it go like this, and we could sew it on around it so it looks more like an axe. That's kind of cool, right? What do you think? A cool axe? Or we can make it out of pipe cleaners. But honestly, I think buttons is way cooler. We could always use like a regular button or, or we could do this giant, our giant, uh, our giant one, obviously, like this. We wouldn't need to wrap a lot of thread around it, but it does look really dope. You know, I don't know what you guys think. Donation. We got a tip. Oh, curious snail. Thank you, man. You're on fire, curious snail. Okay, we're gonna add uh, something to the tree for curious snail. So let's switch the cam real quick. It's getting dark in here. No more sun. Um, okay, we want to add to the back round a bonimal for a curious snail and I am so inclined to give I think a curious snail feels like uh, a demon this feels like a demon donation so we're gonna add a demon to your to the background for you curious snail this cute little demon he's so cute and we'll add him to the background for you and plus he's red, so it'll really pop out. Poifect. Poifect even. Okay. I mean, yeah, this one is dope. Like, way too cool. But I think that it needs to be, like, I think we need two, and then we have to tie it together. I don't even know how I get it into the hand also is the problem that I'm feeling. And I feel like this guy seems like a wise old man that would know how to use a weapon that doesn't look so scary. Like I feel like that big weapon would be more for like a, hold on, I got to fly. Got it. No, he got out. You bastard. Got, die. Hmm, he didn't want to die. Okay. I kind of, I kind of just like this one though, you know. It feels cool. It feels like simple. It feels clearly made. I mean, obviously, I would wrap it around it. No, I don't know the name. Let's. We should vote on the name. Okay, so I choose four. I like this one. Hold on. 
Um, we got this one. I like, oh, I love Iroh. Great choice, great name choice. And then And then of course we got Gravitate. Okay. And the QA. Here we go. Choose a name. Hold on, almost done. There we go. Name choices are in the poll. Let's not throw needles, Louie. Um, okay, so back to this dilemma. We could also try using, actually, you know what? Remember those cool ones that we were talking about before? Maybe we'll try those ones. Oh, these ones. What do we think about these ones? Like this one on the top of it. It's like this. That looks pretty cool. Now that looks like a wise man's weapon. Okay, I'm, I'm making the executive decision. I like this one. But I really want to wrap it with twine. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through the center. this and then we're gonna go let's see we're gonna thread this part on our needle our station here is getting a little messy that's okay through it and then I'm gonna go around the outside and then I'm basically gonna like weave it like this I'm gonna work on a tutorial for this by the way soon but like that and we'll go back into the button and that'll keep down the top of it like this Okay, I'm glad we're using this one actually because I really wanted to use this this uh, button. And I'm just gonna wrap, I'm gonna actually wrap this down the piece like pretty significantly. Like pretty far down, I think. Um Yeah. Like this. You know what? I kind of want to wrap it as it goes down. I kind of want to wrap it around this other end, so I'm gonna undo that. Okay, we're gonna use this end here. Actually, why don't we wrap them simultaneously around? So we'll go one way and then the other way. We'll do some kind of weird braiding situation, which probably will look way not as cool as I want it to, but that's okay. this ah that didn't work okay let's just go there's a little doggy I hear a doggy that. When we get to this end part, I'm going to use this one. We're going to go through that cut, that split there. Okay. 
Wow, that's very frayed. We're gonna have to cut down the fray or burn it or something. We'll go like this. And double knot down here. Probably an easier way to do this, but this looks pretty cool. Like that. And then we'll cut these ends. And I think it probably is a dangerous thing to do, but I kind of want to use a lighter to like burn off all these little frayed ends. Is that stupid? Is that a dumb idea, chat? You let me know. Maybe we can just cut it. I just feel like burning it would solve a lot of issues. But we also might catch our house on fire. And that's no fun. That looks super cool. That looks super dope. Okay, cool, I like this. Oh, I didn't get to choose a name. I'm choosing that one. Someone said, wait, wait. wait. We're doing Eminem now, Shady's back. Tell a friend. <laughs> Wow, you guys are silly. Okay. Like that. God, it does look really cool. That looks so dope. Okay. I also think it'd be cool to do like some carving in this. So like maybe if I just like do this and and like this so it looks like it's a little worn you know I don't know how far down we're going but just some wear and tear to it so it looks a little older I want it to be long, you know, like taller than his body. So we'll probably end it right here. We'll cut it right there. Like this. Okay. And let's do a little bit more wear and tear to it. Working our way down. So it looks like, it almost looks like bamboo. guy is so extra. I love him. What's his name, by the way? What'd you guys vote for names? Oh my god, it's torn between Grandpa Dave and Iroh. Both great names. Let's add this to the hand. Like that. Oh, it's like a cute awesome like walking stick that clearly is like an also a pretty dope weapon i think his hair is a little long <laughs> well is it is his hair long that's the question do you think the hair on the top of his head is too long or not uh, i don't know it's debatable he's got a cool walking stick Clean off our station a little bit. What do you think? Are we done? Or do should we make an adjustment to the hair? Cool. 
He totally does look like Uncle Ira, though. No question. He needs a name, I agree. But it is a torn vote right now. 24 votes, and it's split. It's split in two. Why the hair cut a little shorter? Okay, I, 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 you know what, I agree. I just needed someone else to say it. So I'm gonna go, I think a little shorter than this one even. So like, oh boy, you ready? Separate the yarn and braid it? You think I'm that good? I don't, I, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can do that well enough. I, I actually, I'm pretty confident I can't, so I'm not going to. If I had three, I would, but this yarn is just so like fuzzy. It's just going to be too hard to braid. We're going to go right there with the cut. We're going to see what we did. And we're going to we're going to regret it immediately. No, we won't. That's pretty good. Yes. Okay. That's good. I like that it like I like that it if we have it going over on this side, then it kind of fills in the space a little bit, you know, cuz it's like He's got his thing over here. It kind of makes it a full square. It'd be cool if we could get another button on this, but I don't think we can. Not a button, a, a bead. I love how it's flowing though. Okay, we're gonna call it. I think this is really good. I'm like super duper proud of it. And we have 25 votes. So we're ending the vote now. And who's going to be winning? Iro. Iro by one vote. So this his name is Iro. Oh. Iro's beautiful. You're beautiful. You are a beautiful dwarf. I think I love you. Uh-oh. I'm in love with the crochet dwarf. I should tell Jules. <laughs> wow, look at that. Look at his super cool weapon. He looks like he knows so much. He just looks so wise and his beard is so long. I love him. Wonderful work. Okay, you guys. That is gonna be it for today's stream. Let's see if I can get this in a better position so we can get a better view of this guy without unplugging it by accident. Like that. I'll zoom in a little bit. There we go. Put him right in the center. Oh, so cool. Super duper cool. Fix that a little bit too. Here, let's get these other lights on him too. I got I got extra lights. So that way he'll get a little bit more lighting under the hat. Just a little bit. That's great. Sorry, Iro. Just need to dust off your station. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much for joining. I think this is a, oh, it's a good one, you guys. I mean, l let me put out all the things we've made this year so far. Cause we made this adorable hummingbird. We've got Iro. we got We got Gooey, a little crocheted version, a goblin version of me. I mean, so far this year, guys, we're on fire. We're on fire. So good. Oh, 
That's awesome. Okay, guys. Pasta La Pizza. Happy hooking. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining. I'll see you guys next Thursday. Same time, same place. 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We are going to be making kobolds. Huh? Little, little, little demons. We're going to be making these little guys. Um, next week, uh, same time, same place, 3 p.m. So make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss it when we come out with new videos. And uh, that pattern's going to be coming out very soon. And thank you guys all so much for your support if you've tipped extra thank you if you're a member extra extra thank you and uh if you stayed here the whole time i mean you're great again if this video gets uh up to 200 likes i'll do a giveaway for a crochet next week if it doesn't get 200 likes i'll still probably do a giveaway it just won't be that big i think that's fair okay you hang up oh my gosh stop no you hang up first mm. Oh my god, you're so bad. Oh my god. Oh, no, you hang up first. Oh my god. Oh my god. Stop. Lonnie, uh, the cobalt pattern should drop this weekend. Okay. Bye. You hang up first. Okay, bye.